I'm talking about equations. For a long time, the world has dwelt on uh, faith, beliefs, possibly dreams, and the truth. And the kind of world you got today is a world that's based on those particular things. How do you like it? <laughs> you have to judge a tree by the fruit you see. And whatever people have been basing things on, it came out to be exactly what it is, like Iran and the students over there. And they're only the products of what older people uh, taught them, you see, because they really don't know anything except things they've dealt with in, the, in schools. And so they're the products of the schools, and they're the products of religion. They're not really the products of themselves, because they just got here on the planet. So really, they don't have any right to express themselves on anything except through older people. Somewhere along the way, the older people, our so-called older people, made the mistake of not preparing the way for the so-called younger people. And the kind of world you got today is facing imminent destruction by beings from other spheres. Because the universe is very delicate, you see. And everything you do here affects other beings. Well, it is said it's always, it reaches all the, way, all the way up to God and down to Satan. So if you're in between these two great forces, you have to be sure that you're doing something that is possibly pleasing to them. If you're in between two great forces, God and Satan, and you're doing something neither one of them like, you're in trouble. <laughs> All along, every now and then, the cosmic forces drop down some words to man. Like Vincent Reverend Sun Moon came over, an American said that uh, America had to be very careful because God's agent had landed in America. And America was in danger of doing the same thing the people did when they rejected Jesus Christ. He also said that um, God didn't want anything else to do with man and because he can't trust him. And he also said that Satan doesn't want anything to do with him either because he can't trust him. <laughs> now all these different people coming along talking things, they're not just talking things of their own because as long as man has been on this planet, he never has had a thought of his own. The thoughts always came from somewhere else. And he used it and moved along with it according to, he always twisted it to be, to fit him, you see, instead of trying to twist himself around to fit something greater than himself. Man finally reached down and started talking about all men are equal. And he tried to make all men equal, which is against, against the law of nature. Man also talked about freedom, which is also against the cosmo law, because everything has to be turned down where people talk about interdependence and not independence. Iran today is a product of seeking to be free and seeking independence. So if they could just separate themselves from the world completely, they would be independent. But the fact is whatever they do over there affects us, you see. And that's why they're making a drastic mistake. Because you can't really affect billions of people and do something that you want to do yourself in a selfish manner without regard for anybody. When you reach that point, you reach past the level of God because not even God does a thing like that. Selfish people will never make it on earth any longer because there are some more people getting ready to take over. These people are not selfish. There are people sent to help you. Of course, you won't have any freedom. You're entering over to 1980, and you got a book called Big Brother, and it's telling you that Big Brother will be there to tell you everything you to do because you you gotten lost down here. I was reading in a paper the other day that they'd found out that uh, one of the moons of Saturn is a base for UFOs, you see. So the truth is finally coming out. I've been talking about Saturn for years, you see. <laughs> I don't remember ever having been there, but I'm sure I'm a citizen of Saturn. 
but I have been to Jupiter. Some things when you tell people, <laughs> they, you know, they don't really believe it. So a lot of people have done things that they're afraid to speak of, you see. But in the meantime, governments are spending billions of dollars to go on out into infinity. When I first told people about that, they didn't believe it. Now I've had a lot of trouble out of um, the people who speak the universal language on this planet, namely musicians. They don't seem to understand anything beyond the earth plane, except the ones I've come in contact with. And some of them rose up to fame, and they didn't, they didn't, uh, they used the spirituality to get to be wealthy. That's all they wanted. They didn't tell any other people about it. Now here in America, I, there's so many people up on top that I developed that you'd be amazed. That's even your Dick Gregory, you see, and John Coltrane and Norman Connors, and even Sonny Rollins, too, came by me, you see. He reminded me that he played with me, too. So now, uh, we're beware. Uh, you, some people play with Duke Elton, uh, Nelson Williams. Um, well, just a host of people that you never dreamed came past me. And I was trying to tell them about the creator of the universe, but now I'm talking about the creator of the omniverse, you see. I move along in spiritual planes of evolution, now, at first I was talking about music being a universal language. Now I'm saying that music has stepped up to be the omniversal language, you see. That's the eternal, well, the eternal uh, everything, you might say. It's dealing with something that was always here. It's kind of hard for people to imagine a being that is always, is always being and doesn't touch upon the face what you call life. Because this being is greater than life and greater than death. This being only permits life to be. You're living on a license down here. You have to have a license to do anything, you know. You know, you have to have certificates. Well, you got your birth certificates. And then you get your death certificates, you see. <laughs> But you haven't got a certificate to be. <laughs> you don't have a certificate to really own yourself. You belong to somebody else. You can't determine how long you're really going to live. You can't determine anything. So as long as you can't determine anything, it's really ridiculous to say you're free. If you can't decide that you want to be rather than to die, if you can't conquer death, it's ridiculous for you to be intelligent and say that you are free. Because unless you can conquer death, you are not free. That's your Lord and your master. That's your limiter. That's your governor on this planet. Because all men bow to death. Now I'm talking about equations. These are a lot of people who come along talking to planet Earth, and they want to do good things but they didn't have the license to do it, you see. And they didn't have the permission from the Creator to do it. That's why they failed, you see. That's why the Russians would come up and say there is no God because of the fact of so many terrible things happening here. But the fact is, the fact that things are happening bad here is proof there is a God because he's the one supervising, you see. And everything that happened bad to you is straight from God. And it's right over in your Bible telling you that I will watch over you for evil. But since people don't believe that, they have this Bible and they look at it, and they only look at the good things. But really, they should look at some of the bad things that God said would happen to this planet. And although a person may be a communist, or he might be in Islam, they all bow to one master, death. And what everybody on this planet should do now is to try to find out how they can be. They can forget the word life. <coughs> it never existed anyway, you see. And they can also forget about death, too, because it only exists because of life, you see. So then you have to rise up above life, because you can walk out in the street and look at the products of life. When you walk down Skid Row, you see the fruits of life, you see. And when you see a person dying, you also see the fruits of life. So therefore, this word life is very strange indeed, because it's not really life. It's something like 
a dream. It's something that came to be temporarily that should never have been. It's a product of people's actions of what they did. It's like karma, you see. People kept on doing things back in the past that were not pleasing to other beings. And finally, they turned around and made it a law on this planet for you to be bad and not to be good. And there came a time when it was against the law to be righteous and against the law to be good. You're living in that time now. And there came a time where the creator of the universe said that only those who are wicked could be saved. And that's why you got the Christian church which says Christ died to save the ungodly, left the righteous out, you see. So then it comes a time where this great battle between the wicked and the righteous are getting ready to take place. You got Iran over there waiting for you. you know. So then that's the righteous, you see. Of course, you're the wicked because it says that you're a great Satan. And it says that Russia is the sons of Satan, you see. So it's right out in the open now. Well, then you have one righteous nation, Iran, you see. There comes a case where the wicked are going to have to fight against the righteous. It's always been predicted about Armageddon, you see. This is it. So whether you want to be part of it or not, you would have to get involved. It's not a matter of religion or politics or nothing. It's a matter of your survival. If you bow down to forces that represent death, you're through on this planet. This is your great decision. So then you have to do what you know to be right for yourself. And the only thing right for you to, to do and to be is to be, you see. Anything other than that is wrong. Because you're here and you wouldn't be here unless you were intended to be. So you got to make good use of that. And your whole thing should be where you have to defeat death, the kind of death, uh, what they got. Of course, in doing that, you would enter over into another death because if you get rid of uh, what you are, that part will be dead, you see. So it's all death on this planet, never life, you see. It comes down where the savior of this planet would be death, which would be called a second death. And you got a lot of things, a lot of things over in the Bible which tell you everything that could possibly be for you, the potentials, but it's in code, you see. And by it being in code, a lot of people have ridiculed it. For instance, the Russians said, the communists said, that religion is, is opium of the people. And the Bible said, they got God saying, I have drugged my people. So it's quite agreeable, you see, that there is no contradiction. The Bible says, too, I have drugged my people. It also says, I have killed my people. It also says that liberty, the proclamation of liberty, is really destruction for people. The dead word is synonymous with destruction. And as you look over history, you can see that even in America, the first man said, give me a little to the dev, got both of them at the same time. <laughs> and the first black man that spoke up for living in America, Christmas Adams, got killed, you see. And all along the way, when you just read history, you see all the men who stood up and spoke for freedom got wasted. And it did not accomplish what they wanted to. And if you, you know, all the armies in the world went out and fought for freedom for humanity, and where are they now? They're all dead. And they're not free because they're in captivity to death, you see. Nobody's really dead. They go into captivity. Just like a police go out and get people and put them in jail, you don't see them. You got a spiritual jail, too. You got another kind of police, namely death. Come and get people. Middle of the night, any time they want, put them over in jail. Now, I was just like everybody else when I first came on this plane. I didn't know anything, completely ignorant. As I look back over my childhood, I'm amazed at how ignorant I was. But it's a good thing I was because then I didn't accept anything as being the truth. And that made me have to research, you see, and in researching, uh, I found out all these things, things about ancient Egypt, like people speak badly about Pharaoh all the time. And I found out that was uh, something deliberately set up for people to throw them off. Because the word Pharaoh just means something like president or king. But all the people got the word Pharaoh 
as being synonymous with something bad. And why does that have to be? When Egypt uh, had a civilization longer than anybody else, 5,000 years. So whatever they were doing, it's better than what you're doing today, where you got to gum it up one day and down the next day, and leaders don't have no consideration, no respect. But they did have respect for leaders then, you see. But you got a case where teenagers don't respect their fathers, their mothers, the police, the preacher, nobody. You really can't continue like this. So you're going to have to abandon the word freedom because they're only trying to be free because you teach them that. But you shouldn't do that any longer. You should have schools of discipline because schools of discipline, like it's written over in this neglected book, The Bible, which you took out of the schools, which says a man cannot learn without discipline. You need to put that book back in there because it's telling you the truth. A man cannot learn without discipline because it didn't say nothing about a woman because they're going to learn anyway, you know. They're going to be just like that sister Eve, you know. Now, I had, um, in, um, in Philadelphia, a Jehovah Witnesses came by, and I told uh, one of them was a woman, so I said, you know, every woman on this planet should burn a cow for that sister Eve to get her out of this trouble that she got into and ask God to forgive her. And she was Jehovah Witness. She said, well, Eve wasn't sorry for what she did. And neither am I. She did what she wanted to do. She didn't ask God for forgiveness. And I'm not either because she did what she wanted to do. But she said. And I said, it is written that the world is in the conditions in today because of a woman who wanted to be free. And I said, I'm not against you. But you, this freedom that you set up for man isn't working out too well. And man is getting weaker and weaker and weaker every day. He's getting so weak that you don't have no respect for him anymore. Now, unless you do something for man to have some spirit, he's on the way out. You won't have any on this planet to be equal to. And when he leaves, you're going to. <laughs> so the best thing you can do is to try to resurrect him or do something to stand him on his feet before it's too late. And it's almost too late. Come in and making a lot of errors now. In fact, I heard that they sent some bombs out yesterday by, um, well, the computer made a mistake. And these bombs were on the way. They didn't name what country, but you probably know what country. Now, suppose that it happened, you see. You wouldn't be sitting here now. <laughs> At least part of New York would be gone. So you're in a, you're in a very delicate age. Everything is so delicate now. You got to use your intuition. Don't use your brain. Like when I'm telling you, don't use your brain to try to decide whether I'm telling you the truth. It's not going to help you, see. I'm very well disguised and concealed. So you can't get to my mind. But you could spiritually get on the right kind of frequency, just like turn into a radio, and then you, you would know. You know, you wouldn't believe I'm telling you the truth you would know that I'm telling you the ultimate in truths. And you would know that I'm over an exit for you to get out of this before it's too late. Because you're going to get destroyed on this planet. That should do something quick. Anytime you got computers up that make mistakes, they can kill millions of people, and you too, it's time for you to see that whatever you're doing, something's wrong. Or maybe something is right since it's possibly against the law for you to do right, you see. When a long time ago, it's all predict, told about people was told to do right by God. Of course, they broke every law. So I have to go by the books, you know. You got these books here, which you say are the word of God. And actually, that is the truth. It is the word of God. But not the word like when I'm speaking, you see. It's not that kind of word. You're spelling it wrong. You got to spell it another way. And then you understand a little better what the word of God means. Now, if you spell it W-E-R-E-D, you get some light. Because it's the word of God. Anything that's word, like you say, if I would, is, and if I wish, you see, it becomes over into an abstract. So if you take the word and you make it past tense, you see, 
And you spell it W-E-R-E, do you pronounce it just like you do W-R-D? And that's been the trick on this planet. You never saw that the word of God is W-E-R-E-D. Now when something's word is executed, the word execute is a strange word because it means to put into action and it also means to kill. Here you got a double word, execute. But even in business today, they talk about executives, you see, so they have to execute. <laughs> so now you got this executed. It's like I was, one time, they had a meeting in Washington that the public never really knew about. They had the Muslims, they had the Christians, they had the, the Jews, and uh, they had the black Muslims there too. They didn't have the Hindus or nothing like that since they, they were talking about all religion, but they didn't have them. But they had, they had the Catholics there too, Protestants and the Catholics. I was there too. I wasn't supposed to be there because I'm not a priest or anything like that. I'm not even righteous. I still was there. And um, they were talking some things about how to get together. And that didn't make the newspapers, you see. But in the process, the, the, um, the black minister got up and was talking about Christ and all that. And the rabbi, the Jewish rabbi, got up and said, well, he didn't, one thing about the difference between black people and Jews, the black people said that Jews killed Christ. You have to stop saying that. It's very bad relationships to be teaching against the people something like that, that prejudice. So the black men got up and said, we're not teaching that the Jews killed Christ, we're, that the Jewish people killed Christ. We're teaching that the leaders, the rabbi, the, the Sadducees, and the Pharisees. So then the rabbi said, well, I'm a Pharisee. I resent that too. You have to stop teaching that. He walked out to me. You know. He said, well, what does it matter that one man died anyway? Same thing the Bible said. It said, it said. I saw it react, reacted right before my eyes at the Catholic University. He said, what does it matter about one man? As long as it's been going on, you forget him. It's of no consequence. If he'd been the son of God, couldn't nobody have killed him anyway. So the black man said, God said, I'm still going to teach that the black people, that the Jewish leaders killed Christ. So, but he stood there and he put his fingertips together and he said, but I have often wondered why God would let his son die. I don't understand it. I haven't gotten the answers. So after the meeting, I spoke to this black man and I said, well, it's because you're saying that God's son was crucified. He was executed because it was done by law. You shouldn't say crucified, say executed. That meant he's put in action, you see, executed. In other words, the word of God was executed. But it wasn't a, it, it wasn't a W-R-D, it was a W-E-R-E-D. Now you can tell that, that suppose that Christ came to pass. They always said in the Bible, it came to pass such and such, thing. it came to pass. Okay, if it came to pass, then it was word. It's like a wish coming true, you see. And if you say, if I was so and so, and if I was this, now the instant it becomes a reality, it becomes a word because you know it has to go into the past tense. So now you, you, if you deal with this word like that, W R E D, you'll have a better understanding of the word, word of God, you see. Because that's the executed of God. And then you can get over here and you see what it says. So in jumps over into abstract or uh, diagonal uh, issue in. Now these words are very close together. And that's written in the Bible. Take words, my people, and return to me. But of course nobody ever sees that. But it does say that. That's what they asked me at this meeting. They had at the Catholic University. Two women stayed after the meeting, and they asked me, well, what must we do? I said, it is written, take words, my people, and return to me. You got to put these words together properly. For instance, like if you put some chemicals together, you know if you put some of them together, they become deadly. That's the way it is with words. 
You can put certain words together and they become deadly for you and deadly for a nation and deadly for everybody. I mean, words produce uh, the atomic bomb, symbols, words. That's where they got it first. First they put on these symbols, letters and words, and then they were able to produce that, you see? Like if you got to have, like, for instance, like if you want to make a building, it's better to get your knowledge to take he make your blueprint. Now, whatever you live in here, or supposed to live in, that was a blueprint. And it was equational. And these equations are about to kill you, unless you get some more equations. Now, for some time, I've been talking about altered death, destiny. That's the substitution of the destiny for the one you got. Because the one you got is spelled D-O-O-M, you see. And it's knocking at your door. So therefore, it's impossible for you to get out because there's such a thing as karma. So then what must you do? You must appeal to God's impossible department because the possible can never save you. And the truth cannot save you because the truth is what you do every day. It's what you have done in the past. It's what you think every day. And it's what you read in the newspapers. Everything out there that's happening is the truth. And everything that happened in history is the truth. That's not any good. You see, I was sent to this planet by, well, uh, a creator you know nothing about. And I was trained by this creator in music and everything else. To talk to you right now. I've been to some other planets. I've talked to some other beings. I've seen some dances that you've never seen. I've heard some music you've never heard about Three months ago, I had a vision that I saw some materials that would, well, it defies description. I saw some jewelry. There's nothing like you got on this planet. It was like a big supermarket. There was the supermarket of, of the omniverse. The, everything in the omniverse was in this market. I didn't see any walls because it was so big there were no walls. But I stopped at one counter that had some, some socks there. These socks were like they were alive. They were glittering like diamonds and, and all. I wonder, well, how could that be? You know, it wasn't like sequins, like you got, but this was like they were alive. And I wanted to know how much they were, so they said it was uh, $90, a pair of socks. Then I said, well, I've never seen anything like this before, but I better go and see about the pants. <laughs> and when it went over the pants, that was $180. So finally, he said, well, if you, since you're from another place, say, I have a tax here for everything. It's $80. And I was still standing up there trying to decide what well, I want the pants or the socks. Then I came back here, you see. But I, I, was, I wondered if I had paid on it, would, would they have been in the bed with me? You see? Because you, you're in an incredible thing now. You know? It's incredible for you to be sitting up here listening to me because it, wherever you came from, you were made by an impossible being that has always been, uh, always is, and you know that's impossible, don't you? It's impossible for anything to be so self-existent that never had a beginning and never an end. You're the products of that kind of creator, which is mind-boggling or whatever you might call it, but you're the products. Now, you're the product of, of something that great, uh, this nothing that that's great. You most certainly supposed to be doing better than you are on this planet as intelligent people. Now, you got all kind of things happening on this planet. All these walls, all this destruction, and that doesn't seem right for intelligent people. It doesn't seem even right for righteous people. You know. Of course, I know the wicked people don't do too much bad. You know, like walls and things, because they they got other ways to do wickedness. You know, they're too busy doing that. Like I was telling a fellow the other day, I always like to tease him because I always tell him, well, I went by your office today, but you weren't there. I'm talking about the whiskey stuff. He's a black man. And he wanted to know, why you talk about me like that? But because he's there every day, that's when I call his office, you know. <laughs> but uh, I told him this battle was coming on between the righteous and the wicked. And I said, well, I would rather choose the wicked 
because we can outdo the righteous. You see, the righteous got to work and work and work and work and do good works all the time. And all I have to do is to take the wicked and say, well, all right, fellows and girls, let's sit down today and don't do nothing. And you sit down all day long and don't do nothing. <laughs> the first time they ever did anything right, they just don't do nothing. <laughs> so I said, if I can get them to sit down a whole year and don't do nothing, we'll defeat the righteous. Because they're going to be working and working and working, and the wicked will be pure purely righteous because they wouldn't have done nothing, just sit there. <laughs> so he said, well, you're messing up my mind. Then he got it. <laughs> we were in Washington the other day, about two weeks ago, and I was at a church. So then I told the people, I said, yes, well, uh, God went on a vacation three days ago. And this man said, on a vacation? I said, sure. God has never had a vacation. He's always working and working and listening to prayers and all that. I gave him a paid vacation. <laughs> I told him that I would pay him with beauty because that's all I got to offer. I would pay him with music and creativity and beauty and paid vacation. So then this fellow said, you're burning my mind out. So he left. But then after two weeks of God on a vacation, I finally said, you know, I better tell God to come back because during these two weeks he's on vacation, people did some things that they that really not understandable. Like, for instance, a black man cut a black woman's head off and police came, so he came to the door naked and put the head on the porch, left it out there. He's in court now saying something like, well, he's Jesus Christ and just cut her head off. Now you got all kinds of things happening in families that are incredibly wrong, you see. All kinds of ways wrong. Well, this plan could never really be condemned by a righteous person. That was the trouble, you see. Only a wicked person can, can condemn the wicked. When a wicked person come up and tell the wicked, you're wrong, they're in trouble. They're in trouble. But a righteous person come up and tell the wicked you're wrong. What well, does it matter, you know? After all, righteous people don't know nothing about being wicked, so how do they know whether it's right or wrong? <laughs> <laughs> so then you come down to the point where you have to get out in the business. You're going to have to get out in the business and be concerned about what every man does on this planet because it's going to affect you, you see. It was a time where some people in one country do something that didn't affect you. But they come down to the point where every word a man said, everything a man does, a woman, is going to affect everybody on this planet. So then, you can't isolate yourself anymore. You got to really get over into the scene. And when people out there doing wrong, you will have to tell them, it's wrong. Now you might be ever so right in your country, but it's affecting me. And when it hurts me, it's wrong. Now it might be good for you, it's wrong for me. And you have to do that. Don't care what country it is. You have to do that. Because if you don't stand up and do that, you're going to get destroyed. As simple as that, you know. Uh, there's no other solution. This planet can't be allowed to go on like this, you see. Uh, you got all those teenagers out there, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know which way to turn. And grown people are not doing anything about it. You simply can't let them stay out there like that. They're over in the space age. Now, whatever men and women were doing 10 and 20 or 50 years ago has nothing to do with children today. They're facing meeting other beings. They're facing uh, going into outer space. When 1980 come in, you see all kind of things going to be happening. You just like over in a science fiction film now. Uh, you've outlived, you might say you've outlived the Bible, which was your scenario. Everybody had a part in that. Now, black people have been saying a long time, when the role is called up yonder, I'll be there. But they didn't know it was R-O-L-E, not the R-O-L-L. -L. And so they had a part to act. And they acted these parts, and they acted these parts. And then white people began to think, oh, black people are like this or act that. But they only act in parts, you know. 
and someone gave him these parts to act. Of course, the white race had a part to act too. And they had to deal with white supremacy and other things, lies. But the part of it, they all were acting parts in this play, this drama. You might call it a passion play. Now, the passion play moves over into these words. Like I tell you, take these words. Now, passion is mostly considered as desire. But desire also moves over into aim, you see. Desire also is your word, so you got that, you see. Passion equal desire equal aim. But, but desire also equal to wish. And you jump over to these words. Now you got to deal with words that came from ancient days. You got to go all the way back to the Gil Gilgamesh epic, you know. You know anything about that? In Assyria? Okay, you go back there. You read what they're talking about. And it's affecting you. It's talking about God gave you the gift of death, you see. In the meantime, if you go out to... Um, it's this uh, Bihar temple. They got two, supposedly. One in Moscow, one in Chicago. And you go there, they got all these different doughs for you to in the end, you know. 13, I think. They got all the different religion symbols on this building. But it's got something about God made death a message of joy for humanity. So now you got this message of joy. Now, you, you got dealing with these words, and people do be saying, when they're really happy, they say, that leaves me breathless, you see. And if you're breathless, you're dead, you see. <laughs> but of course, these words are telling you that breathlessness means ecstasy. That's right, passion means ecstasy, too. So you got this ecstasy play, a picture of God's son on the cross dying, you know. So then, that's ecstasy. That's passion. Passion play. Passion drama. You even said passion play. Just a play. I was reading somewhere where they said when Christ was dying, he spoke in a loud voice. But then the doctors said, a man cannot speak in a loud voice when he died. But he said he spoke with a loud voice where everybody could hear him, like an actor projecting the words, you know. This thing... This planet has really been um, hoodwinked, you might say, because you had a cosmic being come along who came along with the intent to deceive you. And you got a Bible that said God would send them a strong delusion in order they might believe a lie. You got a Bible that says, Our Lord God, you have greatly deceived these people. Tell them they'll have peace when the soul reaches to their very soul. It's right in the book, you see. So then uh, you can believe it if you want to and not believe it. It's still the truth. But it's the kind of truth you got to rise up above. And the kind of truth that you have to deny it is for you. You see, if you accept the truths of people from way back in the back who supposed to be righteous, who ended up dead themselves. I mean. even, even Moses, who was supposed to be very righteous, ended up dead because he wasn't obedient. So then you have to say, the what makes a man really righteous or a woman is when they're obedient. That most certainly is not freedom. So righteous equal obedience. Now I was telling some people now, you broke all the Ten Commandments, telling some black people, but you've broken every commandment except one. And this was at a school, and all the students gathered around me, very eager, and asked me which one we didn't break. break. Because they were ready to break that one too. <laughs> <laughs> and they insisted I tell them. So I said, Well, you, you broke the law where God said that everybody had to die. I mean, you haven't broke that law yet. You have to break that one. And when you break that one, you'll be a complete sinner. <laughs> but right now, you're about a 99, 100 sinner. <laughs> but you have to break that law, and then you really will be cooking, you see. <laughs> but it's quite difficult. You can't do it by yourself because it's written uh, through one man, death came into the world, and through another, immortality. But since you got a doctrine that all men are equal, everybody thinks they can do that. 
but it's not true. It's just like the United States can pick an ambassador, and that ambassador represents this country. If anybody else goes down and gets an ambassador's shoes in trouble, and that's the way it is on this planet. A person can get up and say he represents God, but if he's not authorized as such, he's in trouble, even though he might be ever so righteous. And you can have all kind of good citizens in America, but they're not supposed to get in the ambassador's shoes because they haven't been authorized to do so. Now, on this planet, you're definitely going to have somebody sent from the creator universe as, as his ambassador. Could be me. I hope not. I've been trained for, to bend and to understand humanity. But that's a big job, you see. If you're going to go out and tell the Russians, okay, put churches back up. If you're going to go and tell Iran, stop fighting. If you represent God, you can do that. And it better stop. But then that's what you're going to need. And you're going to have to keep an ambassador here from the creator, somebody. So when one of these nations get out of all of the ambassador and just go and tell them to stop, and if they don't stop it, they'll be obliterated. Simple as that. And you're facing that, you see. You're facing why you're not going to have any more freedom because you've got to have somebody to supervise this this, this, this planet Earth, because they're out of order, you see. Now, I'm still talking about equations. The word kill is also considered as something very nice. I know some, for some time in the black community, they would say, man, they really killed me. That's when they enjoyed something, you see. So I'm not talking things that I think about. I'm going by the words that people say. And these words, you see, Reach over in all languages. Take the word Pekka, P-E-K-H-A. That's an English word. Old English, it means rod. You right there? And you're talking about a man's penis, you also say rod. Also, it moves right all over to dick, which means a detective or a god or something like that. You see? You got all these words. It also moves on to a little boy's worm, W-R-E-M, worm. You see, you take these words, and you keep on moving with these words, and you will be astounded. It also moves into the word Peter. Catholic Church based on Peter. You see? <laughs> and they got the steeple up there. The shape like one, at least to reach the point. And Peter set the church up, you see. Well, the word Peter also can't mean it's short for interpreter. You got a case where, where you got Christ telling Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. But, but turn the other thing over to him, too. You see, at the same time, interpreter. Whatever the interpreter says, that's the way the world goes. Unfortunately, you haven't had the kind of interpreter. Your schools couldn't build interpreters that could talk you out of this. Because if you've been condemned by God, you need a lawyer. You got to have a good one. You know, you can do something wrong, come before an usher judge, and you get the right kind of lawyer to talk you right out of it. And that's the way it is with God right now. You get your good lawyer. Appeal the case of Adam and Eve. You never ask for an appeal, you know. <laughs> and all this has been going on all these thousands of years. And you never see that very simple things could change this scene. For instance, like some people came up in Israel and told, they told the, the Israelite government that we should, we should uh, have the trial of Christ over again and exonerate him and say he's innocent. And some people say, God, the reason we have so much trouble is about this Christ. We should say that he's an innocent man. But some people oppose it. But I think it was a good idea, you know. Couldn't hurt anybody, you know. But uh, people, don't, people think everything is complicated. It's very simple. I mean, if Adam and Eve could get in trouble simply by eating an apple, you can see how simple it is. So if they got in trouble doing that, 
which is very simple, it means that whatever you it takes to get out of it is also simple. Because you got a kind of universe that is balanced. And most certainly, you wouldn't have a simple thing getting people in trouble without having another simple thing over here that would get them out of it. It's a balanced universe. There's nothing wrong here except that you're not using the proper equations and you're not going to the proper people to get no results, you know. Like you got a mafia down here, the boys. You can get results with them. Well, the creator got his mafia too, you know. And you can get results with the fellas and the boys. But it's very little that the men can do, you see. It always comes down to the boys. Because there ain't nothing worse than boys. Even the little ones like the sub, they ain't nothing worse than them. Because they always got to be thinking of something bad to do, like pulling butterfly fly ring, wings off. Or, they're always doing something bad, the boys. However, we can take everything here that's bad and convert it. For instance, like we got this lecture lights here. And how does that come to you? Through a dam, not through a blessing. You see, the word <laughs> dam... <laughs> The word dam, you know, you put a dam up. And you're banning something, you're holding something in check. You're saving something too. And that's what the word dam means. It means to save something. So you can be damned and be saved. You see, it's all fixed up. You can be blessed and die. Because it's written, blessed are those who die in the name of the Lord. So you got a strange case where you got to make a choice now. You have to make a choice which side you're going to be on. For a long time, people have been trying to avoid this war over there where Iran is. Because it was predicted that Armageddon would be fought over there. And all the governments of the world drove all they could to keep from having any trouble over there. But according to the Bible, that would be where the last war would be fought. Now, it looks like it's about to happen, you know. It's knocking at your door. It's not where any human agency is doing. There's some outside forces that's compelling you to make choices. The only thing you got left now, choices. And it's written over in the Bible. I have placed before you life and death. Choose life so you can live. Of course, you got the book thrown over in the trash can now because you got it so sophisticated that you don't think something that was here a long time before you got here has any relevance whatsoever to you. But it does. Anything that got here before you, you should respect it because it knows more than you. You see, even if it's a book. But if you get in there, it tells you all about human nature, you see. And you don't have to be religious to see that it's telling a lot of truths, you see. And since you're not all over the world at the same time, you can't really say it's not the truth. Now, you have to be broad-minded. And in being broad-minded, you've got to give your intuition a chance. You've got to know things that were hidden for ages. Phil, and everybody's talking about 666. So that's the beast. Everybody's been warned against it. But if you get back in the ancient, I mean, way back before history, it would tell you that 666 is the number that created the universe, see? Something's wrong in it. Now, the word beast can also be spelled B-E-I-S-T, you see. Yeah. So you're going to do Prist again. The B-E-I-S-T is also a beast. A beast is someone that is for being, you see. So you jump on the ontology. Ontology. And you got to, that means science of being. And you got to jump all the way back to ancient Egypt and you see this word on, which means sun, you see, right there. Because the sun is always on, you see. It's never off, you see. Anything that's a light that you can see is on, you see. And you say that, turn the light on, turn the light off. The sun never goes off. So the ancient Egyptians saw that and they said on for the name of the sun. It's like that today, you see. And it keeps moving on and on and on and on. And never, it keeps on traveling all the time. And it stays on all the time. 
So in that way, <coughs> you got to get back to the sun anyway. When the white race took over, they took down all the sun symbols, you know, in every nation. And every nation fell to the white race. They fell, they took the sun symbols down. So then the sun symbol, however, if you go to the place of Venus in America, you're going to catch some sun symbols in the window somewhere. The sun is always there, you see. And it's very important what kind of symbol you got. Of course, just being what they call human beings, you, you probably haven't realized how important the symbols are. But you can put up the right kind of symbol, and it reaches all the way out into the cosmos. You could actually get aid from other planets if you put up the right kind of symbol. So you have to be careful what symbols you put up. Very careful. Because these symbols also move forward and move backward. For instance, if you take the word S-U-N and you turn it backwards, phonetically, that's news, N-E-W-S. So you got the good news, you know. But you didn't get the sign. You got the news. And that's that's uh, sun backwards. So everything goes backwards here, you see. You keep on going backwards. Like I got a song called Enlightenment, which is being recorded by an English group. See, the English are waking up now. Last time I went to Europe, the English was, musicians were saying they wanted to personally book me in England for them. Since then I got some letters and some tapes from some English musicians who were doing the song Enlightenment, which they said, very beautiful. We're going to do it tonight. But the Enlightenment is talking about uh, space fire and talking about equations. And the English said, that's very beautiful. Now, we have to deal with English, you see, because we are, you might say, Englishmen. We speak in English. And you go all the way back to England and you find out that... Uh, when English was first seen, a Roman em emperor said that uh, they were painted blue, you see. And the emperor, he wanted to know, said, what kind of men are these? And the soldier said, well, they call themselves angels. And that's back there in history. So here you got the word England, which is really E-N-G-L, England, England, and it's the same thing, you see. So then what he said, an angel race, Englishman, you know. When I was in Chicago, I would always go out in the park every day and listen to black people talk different things. I was in the park when the black movement was talking. Everything would be out in that park. It was really wonderful in Chicago where everybody was expressing their opinion. A true democracy in the black community where everybody was saying what they wanted to say, you know. I'd always be in trouble with them because I was talking about space, you see. <laughs> and they were talking about how ridiculous it was. One black minister told me, well, then that would nullify the Bible if people going out of space. I said, well, they're going, you know. It makes no difference. They're going out there. And they're going even farther. And some beings are coming here. All this 25 years ago. So then I took my songs and I tried to enlighten the black community by singing uh, uh, Rockin' Number 9, Take Off for the Planet Venus, by singing We Take a Trip Through Space, the next stop, Mars, you see. All the while I was doing it, I didn't realize that Mars is the, is the fourth planet here, the next planet, you see. And uh, then you got uh, Venus, and then you got uh, Mercury, you see. Now, then as I kept on progress, I found that Mercury is the first planet. It's not only the first planet, it's the first haven. A haven is where, like you... Uh, well, it's a poach, you see, like a boat coming in, and it have to dock there. And if you get out in space, that's a, that's a sea of space out there. So any time you come to a planet, you come into a haven, you see. You can dock there, you see. Now, so Mercury is haven one, Venus is haven two, Earth is haven three. This planet is number three. But haven also means heaven too, you see. Because in Hebrew, H is equal to H-E, so if you got H-A-V-E-N, you can put the H-E there and you got heaven right there, you see. So now, Mercury is the first heaven, Venus is the second heaven, Earth is the third heaven. And we got any basis for that? Of course we have. Because if you take the word Earth and write the way the English wrote it some time ago, it'd be something like E O R. T-H-E, you go back to Shakespeare. Uh, you can put 
Well, it, even today you use herbs. You got the A there now because the alpha is equal to omega, you see. If alpha is equal to omega, then you can put an A. Anytime you see an A, you can put an O. So then somebody did that. They spell it E-R-T-H, although you do not need the A. And phonetic it would be spelled E-R-T-H. Let me permutate that. We got T-H-R-E. And what is that? It's three, of course, you know. So then, uh, you see, this plant is named after three because it is three. Now, of course, the way it's spelled now is E-A-R-T-H. And if you permutate it now, it'll be T-H-E-R-A. And that's the Ra. That's my name. <laughs> so you got a case where it said that, that, that God was sitting down New Jerusalem from heaven, a new earth, you see? And here you got me, and I say, I'm from outer space, and that's the Ra, you see. You permutate it. You got, and it's all right to permutate things. If alpha is equal to omega, you can switch things around. Earth, change the name of the planet to the Ra, you know. It's all right. You'd be in a better position because the Earth is going, you see. So the part of it, if you change the name of this planet, if you do it with the name, then it won't be here when God gets ready to destroy it. Also, if you change the name of man from man to something else, you will have obliterated man. If you change the word woman to something else, woman trying to do that anyway, you know. Her mistake is she's trying to be man, and she's going just like him. But call herself something else. In Chicago, I met a woman, she said, well, she said, don't call me no woman, because woman means woe to man, and I like men. So just call me a female. Pretty close, you know, that, that she was really, for, and also she said one day, she said, well, I, another woman came, well, that's another one, said that she, she did astral traveling. She found herself in the kingdom of Satan, and he told her, I don't like women in my kingdom. Get out as soon as you can before you will never be able to get out of here. I allow very few men in my presence. The only men I allow in my presence now are Englishmen. Now you got a case where the English ruled the world, you know, as long as they had Egypt. It seems that everybody who gets Egypt rules the world. Now America got Egypt now, you see. So it stepped over in the shoes of actually ruling the world. Being a world ruler, it's got to do some world things now to be able to reach different nations who really feel that America is very bad, but they're using American money. They're using American inventions. It's just they don't understand, you see? Well, the basis of, of misunderstanding can come through music. America is only guilty of one thing, that's crushing music, that uh, they're inventive, very creative, and thoroughly American. And America had been guilty of that for maybe 25 years or 30 years. It's boomeranging back on them, you see? You never did have a rule of a country coming up saying the music was corrupt when America had a free system where all musicians could present what they're doing. You never had that. So there is some base to what the meaning is saying about your corrupt music. You should correct it. Now you got, you got all this talent in America, not only among black people, but all nations. It ought to be some kind of way to put these people on TV or whatsoever put them on TV or whatsoever, and let the world see them. So now you see you in darkness. I, <laughs> you see, you have the folks of darkness at work, you know. But, but they're not uh, really bad. You take like when I was in Egypt, I went up in the pyramid and said the name Ra nine times in the king's chamber. All the lights went out. I find when you begin anything new, the lights always go out. You know? <laughs> One time I associated with Leroy Jones and him of Rock up in Harlem. 
And every time we got ready to play a concert, the lights would go out. Because why? We were doing something uh, uh, that was creative. And creation always starts right in the darkness. And then you make light. You take the darkness, you do something with it. Now also, some things people have to understand about what is black and what is not. There are a lot of people who are dark-skinned who call themselves black. Now they might be ever so dark-skinned, but they're not black unless they are ancient Egypt. The only people who got the right to call themselves black upon this planet are those who belong to Pharaoh, who are ancient Egypt, because Egypt is a black land, you see. You go to Egypt, and at night, you see silhouettes of everything. Because, see, the soil is black, and there's no reflection from the moon. Hence, it is a black land, you see. And the word Egypt means black. If you get you a real old Bible that they took up when black people came out of slavery because they didn't want them to know the truth, Back in the, the glossary of the dictionary part of now, they tell you that the word Egypt means black. So all these people who talk about they're black, unless they're descendants of ancient Egyptians, they're quite wrong, you see. There are no black people upon this planet, but the people of Pharaoh. So the world got to get that straight. So some people with dark skin don't like to be called black, so I'm giving them the opportunity not to call themselves black, because they're not unless they're the people of Pharaoh. And you do have the people of Pharaoh. You got the majority of them right here in America. And it will be coming right on out where you see them. They're going to look more Egyptian. And they're going to be talking about Pharaoh. Because the word Pharaoh means, it's a very bad word now, you see. But the word Pharaoh means the living God. You have to go back to your hieroglyph and you see. The word PH is Egyptian uh, definite article, you see. It means the. And, of course, back in ancient days, they used the word zero to express God. And say, even today, they say, oh, God. They use that oh there. So they use this oh there, you see, which equals 306 degrees, you see, and the circle and is equal to nine, you see. A zero is all called, also called a cipher. And you're dealing with words. So, so, suppose you say the O. You're dealing with the O. You've got theology, which is really the, the ology, you see. It's all about the O then, that they talk about God and they talk about this O. Now, when you begin to put things in place, you really will be amazed at how simple everything is right before your eyes. Now, you deal with this O, the O. Now, you know some people say the. So you put the O, the way they say it. Now, you know in French is uh, le or le, so we say Leo. They got the line right there, you see, Leo. But then if we say le o, you see right there? Because you, if you can say the for the, you can also say le for le. So now you got le o. Now what does that equal to? Since the o is equal to a cipher, it equal to Lucifer, you see? <laughs> now, when you jump over to Lucifer, you go back, to, you go into Hebrew. Now, you find out the word S-E-F-E-R, Sefer. Suppose you say Lucifer. You say in the book, you see, the book. So then you got, you got the book here, you see. The book is supposed to be enlightening. And the word Lucifer means light bearer. The word Pharaoh also can spell P-H-A-R-O. That's got something to do with the lighthouse, you see. Got something to do with the light. So when you jump over the light, the light bearer, Lucifer, you got to deal with these words now and see where they came from. And you'll be really, really surprised. The word sat over there in, in one of these uh, doctrines they teaching means being. B-E-I-N-G. Now, you're over in the land of the sun set. That's the West. Sunset. Set was supposed, uh, was, of course, the Egyptians said, was an evil god. You're over here in America in the land, in the land of Set, you see. The Egyptians also, actually also taught that the West is the land of the dead. 
They were teaching that, see. It's not a matter that it was the truth, but then you do have something in the Bible saying that my, my people are lying children. They must reap the fruits of their lives. That's what you've been doing. So now, all you have to do is to tell a nice lie. And it will happen, you know. The same way these lies that you're living today happen, your only hope now is a lie. In fact, the Christian church is based on a lie. They're dealing with Paul, and Paul said, if you believe my lie. He was smart enough to see that the truth couldn't help. So then the white race took this lie, and the kingdoms they got is based upon Paul's lie. You see? So I'm telling you, but I don't call it a lie a lie. I'm calling them myth, you see. So I'm telling the people that they've tried everything, and now they have to try mythocracy. They got a democracy. They're talking about a theocracy, but they should try the mythology. Now, the mythocracy and the mythology is what you never came to be that you should be. For instance, that as a child, you had a lot of dreams about something that's pure, something you wanted to be, but then you let yourself get compromised by older people who were saying, go this way, do this. And finally, for the sake of some money, you fail, you see. Just like America, when, when it was first set up, when this country was first set up. And these people were talking about independence. They wanted for everybody, including their so-called slaves. The English got in there and said something like, well, if you pass it that way, we're not going to finance you. We're not going to give you any money. So then these people had to decide whether they really were going to have a, a country where every man was free or whether they'd have to compromise for the sake of a dollar. So what did they do? The founding fathers of this country compromised for the sake of a dollar. So you really don't have a democracy here, you see, because they compromised. And because they compromised, when they put the, they had the Liberty Bell up there, the creator cracked it. He cracked it to show you it was not solid. It was not right. So then you got, that's where the spirit comes. Everything is not what it's cracked up to be, you see. <laughs> you still got that liberty bell that cracked up, you see. So then you got the Statue of Liberty. If you take a good look at the Statue of Liberty, it looks more like a man, you see. I always say that the Statue of Liberty is really the Statue of Lucifer. Because it's a light bearer, you see. You see holding that light up there? It's a light bearer. Now the word light bearer is Lucifer, so you got Lucifer standing at the harbor, you know. <laughs> now in Boston you got a place called Lucifer. You got some more places called. I don't know what they're doing in these places. But all around you, you got you got a lot of places that come out Lucifer, which means light bearer. Now you have a choice between the light and the darkness. Of course, they said darkness came before light. Out in the universe, you find more darkness than you will light. But if you got your eye, got your spiritual straight, self straight, the darkness will be to you like it is to God. They said the darkness is as the light to God. So it, it doesn't make any difference, you see. Of course, it might be saying that God just don't know the difference between light and darkness. But you, you have to which put God in the ignorant state, you see. And a lot of things people have said about God down there, God does not approve of it. And that's the only trouble you got down there. He said some things about God he didn't like. So what did he do? He put you over in his name, let you do that. That he's going to kill somebody, say God's going to kill somebody. Put you over there, you kill somebody. God's not going to do none of that. And everything that's bad, he lets you do it in his name. And that's when everybody down is in the name of God, you see. If you take everybody's name, each person's name traces it all the way on back down, you find that every name right in this room means God. Trace it on back to ancient days, and you'll be surprised that everybody's in the name of God. That you need doing so many bad things because they like to think that God is going to destroy this planet, you see. But... They've been prophesying that a long time. And so 
God didn't want to do that, so what he did, he sent, you might say, a substitute. And he sent what they call Christ to take the place of the earth and take the curse of the, the brows on his head and all that like they said the earth was. And actually, that's just a symbol of the earth. So if you believe that the earth must die to save you, you'll have polluted waters, you'll have earthquakes, you'll have cyclones. The earth is going to do everything to oblige you by destroying itself because you're teaching that. It's very simple, you see. Now, if you would teach something else, or get you some kind of high cosmo order of things, and seek to be part of the omniverse, and forget the universe, because the universe, you see, is over there with this one. One is not too good a thing for you now, because you're teaching that God sent his son as one. He said, I am my father one, crucified him. So you crucify one anyway, so don't jump over in that. If you had said it, that uh, they're teaching that the men of Babylon was trying to become as one, and God said that they become as one, they'd be able to do anything they want to do. So what happened? They said that God came down and confused the languages. Now on this planet, you got language upon language upon language that divides itself into dialect. And it's very difficult for you to understand one another. Now a lot of people are teaching that Satan brought confusion on this planet, but the Bible is saying that God did it. And one reason God would be angry with you because you're giving credit where it's not due. You know? If you say he was doing it, which is the truth, you'd get more blessing than to say that Satan did it. Because God is doing all these bad things to this planet. That's what could happen unless you want. So he keep on doing some bad things until you give him some credit. Because you wouldn't give him no credit when he was doing no good, the good things. So he said, okay, I'm going to do some bad things. Maybe they give me credit for that. But you haven't done that yet. So you see, that makes it very simple, doesn't it? If you put things where it belongs, and you, you'll be surprised at where well, you want some blessings, you get them by, by said, telling the truth. If that the truth should make you free. According to the Bible, God is doing everything bad on this planet. And I believe that. In fact, I mean, of course, this videotape, but I have to tell you the truth. I get, you know, some of my messages through, since I was educated just like you, uh, I get my messages strange ways because sometimes my mind might want to reject something. But it happens to me so graphic and so clear that it happens to say it did happen.